welcome to St. John's Lutheran Church, Springfield, Ohio. We're happy to have you join us on YouTube. This is the 30th of November, the first Sunday of Advent. We'll be celebrating Advent up until the 25th of Christmas when we welcome the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. It's the beginning of the first day of the church year. We are celebrating that Jesus, the God of the universe, the creator of the universe, most powerful force in the universe who created us, who created all life, came to the world as a human and lived as a human through his life and then he died on a cross to save us from sins. He conquered death and showed us the great resurrection. We welcome you as you are with us today worshiping. We're at the corner of Wittenberg and Columbia. We would love to have you worship with us in person. We love you, we need you, we pray for you. We want you with us here worshiping. We want you to accept Jesus Christ if you've never accepted him before. He can come into your life and live in with you. We have a service today of Holy Communion. Connie Singleton will be reading the scripture. We're starting out with the confession of sins. We invite you to confess your sins right along with us worship with us to feel like you're part of us and become a part of us and then we receive Jesus Christ into us and he becomes a part of us as he is alive we believe in the real presence of Jesus Christ and we accept him we receive him in Holy Communion you can watch the service today on YouTube and worship with us the service will be beginning shortly Pastor Pollock is our pastor our uh, choir director is Vicki Perks and Greg Nolte is our organist. You can hear Greg now playing our organ here. We're in Springfield, Ohio. This is the 30th of November, 2014, the first Sunday of Advent. Advent, we're awaiting the birth of Jesus Christ on December the 25th. And we meditate upon all this great, wonderful event, the Incarnation, when Jesus was with us as a human. Good morning. Good, morning. Good morning, and welcome to our worship service this morning, and we give a special welcome to our visitors. If you're new in the Springfield Clark County area, or looking for a new church home, we invite you to make St. John a new church home. You can tell by the change of colors that we are now in a new season. This, of course, is Advent, the beginning of the new church year. Uh, with that means that now we will switch from the Gospel readings being mostly from the Gospel of St. Matthew to the Gospel of St. Mark. So the majority of readings for this new church year will come from the Gospel of Mark with some additions from the Gospel of John and the Gospel of Luke. So uh, this is basically the church's New Year's Day. So I appropriate to say Happy New Year because the church is now starting a new year. Um, expectation, renewal, and recommitment. Because of it being Advent, we make one change in our liturgy, that is we leave out the hymn of praise, since this is a time of reflection, repentance, and renewal. So immediately after the Kyrie, we go to the hymn of the day, or we go to the prayer of the day, and then after the prayer of the day, the lighting of the Advent wreath, and then to the reading of God's Word. So let us now turn to page 94 in the front of our worship books. And I invite those who can without difficulty to please stand as we prepare our hearts and minds for worship with the order of confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom our hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, blend the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are happy to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we can be 
dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Amen. Let us now begin our worship with the singing of the first four verses of O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, hymn number 257, in the back of your worship. First four verses of hymn number 257. Come, O Come, Emmanuel, it's translated by John Henry Neal, but it was written in the seventh century, seventh century Latin hymn, and each verse begins with O. This is a traditional way of singing the hymns of the uh, Christmas season, Advent season. This is O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, seventh century Latin hymn, translated by John Henry Neal.
pray to God that the prayer of the day is that the defendant on the front of the today is reading in service in your name. Let us pray. Stir up your power of Christ and God. By your merciful protection, awaken us to the threatening dangers of our sins and keep us blameless. This is the first Sunday of Advent. We'll now be watching two members of the church will be uh, lighting the Advent candle. And then after that, we'll have the reading by Connie Singleton. The theme is Stir Up Your Power, Lord Christ, and Come. We praise you, O oh God, for this crown that marks our days of preparation for Christ's day. As we light the first candle on this reading, Rouse us from sleep, that we may be ready to greet our Lord when He comes with all the saints and angels. Enlighten us with Your grace, and prepare our hearts to welcome Him with joy. Grant this through Christ our Lord, whose coming is certain, and whose day draws near. Amen. Let us now sing, Light One Candle. <laughs> candle, the first one, we now purple one. Listen to the reading of God. Good morning. Good morning. The first reading is from Isaiah chapter 64, verses 1 through 9. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake in your presence. As when fire kindles brushwood and the fires cause water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome things that we did not expect, you came down, the mountains quaked in your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God beside you. We work for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways. But you were angry, and we sinned. Because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean, and our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you. For you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay and you are the potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O oh Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. The word of the Lord.
Corinthians, first chapter, verses 3 to 9. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him in speech and knowledge of every kind. Just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We now have the gospel acclamation as our pastor is walking up to read the scripture. Our theme today is Stir Up Your Power, Lord Christ, and Come. Listen for the theme throughout the service.
Turn your attention to our call. Requires bringing special music. The choir director is Vicki Perks. <laughs>
decided to hold a banquet for all of his angels and demons in order to see what kind of progress they were having on with their missions to impede the growth of the Christian faith and to bring about the condemnation of people who would not hear the good news of the gospel. And so they had a fancy supper and they had entertainment and then they got down to the business of that evening and the first demon came up with his chest puffed out and all with this air of arrogance and got to the platform and the microphone and he said, Satan, I unleashed all the wild animals in the desert against the caravan of Christian and now all their bones are bleaching in the desert sand. To which Satan was unimpressed and responded by saying, so what? Their souls were all saved. So the next demon came up to the microphone. He said, Satan, I had the east wind blow against a passenger ship full of Christians, and the ship sunk, and they all drowned, every one. Again, Satan was unimpressed. He said, so what? All their souls were saved. <coughs> so then from the very back of the room came this little demon forward, and mostly everyone had ignored and didn't think much of in the group of demons and angels. And he got to the microphone and on his tiptoes said into the microphone, he said, Satan, for 10 years I've tried to get a Christian to go to sleep. And finally, I've had one go to sleep on their faith. With that Satan yell out a shout of hallelujah, well not hallelujah, it's devil with a shout of joy. The orchestra began playing and all the demons and angels broke out into a song of happiness because this one little demon had gotten one Christian to fall asleep in their faith. Today is the first Sunday in Advent, the beginning of a new church year. And once again, on this first Sunday, the message is to watch. To keep alert, to be awake, because we know not the time or the hour when Jesus will return. And as we listen to the words of our gospel reading for today, the 13th chapter of the Gospel of St. Mark, we learn some very important lessons from what Jesus is saying. So let us turn back to that 13th chapter and we'll begin with the 33rd verse. Jesus says, be on guard, keep awake, for you do not know when the time will come. Here the word be on guard means to keep your eyes open, to take care, to be alert at all times. Of course, when we talk about sleep, what we're talking about is spiritual sleeping. We're not talking about physical sleep because we know that we all need physical sleep. We're told we need seven hours, at least seven hours of sleep a night. But we're, Jesus is talking about spiritual sleep. Becoming indifferent to the faith. So the first lesson is a warning to beware of indifference in your faith. Now some people, because Jesus has not returned yet, have become indifferent to his return. They think, oh well, it hadn't happened yet. It hadn't, probably won't happen in my lifetime, so I'm not going to worry about it. And so they slack off in their commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ. Some people, because Jesus has not returned yet, become indifferent to the whole message of the Christian faith. They become indifferent to the great commission. They become indifferent to their role in the life of the church and the spreading of the good news of the gospel. Again, thinking, oh, well, it hadn't happened yet. There's all kinds of Christians. They don't need to be doing anything. I can just sit back here with my own belief, my own faith, and do nothing. There are those who become indifferent to the idea of the church growing and expanding to 
throughout the world. Oh, most people want to believe in their religion they've had there for centuries. Let them believe it. Who are, who are we to try to make them be Christians and follow Jesus Christ? Yet this is exactly what Jesus is talking about today. To beware of being indifferent to our faith, to our responsibilities in that faith, to our role in the faith, to the Great Commission, to the mission, to go into all nations. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and teaching them to observe all that our Lord has commanded. It is amazing that in America and Western Europe, so many people have become indifferent to the church. So many people <laughs> have the attitude of the church closed up, so what? And yet the church is the life raft. The church is the life ring. The church is the life vest for the people of the world. It is that city shining on a hill that cannot be hid. It is that light in a darkened room bringing people to salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. So we cannot be indifferent. When we're indifferent, the devil rejoices. When we give in to that temptation to be indifferent and sleep on our faith, the devil rejoices. Some people are so indifferent about the proclamation of the gospel, their attitude has become, well, we've got a sign out front. It says when the services are, if somebody wants to come, all they got to do is walk in the door. But that's not how we saw, that's not how we see the church grow. In the early church, when we read the book of Acts, more importantly when we read the Gospels, when we read the Epistles, we see that the church grew by people inviting others to come and see. The church grew by someone inviting a friend or family member to come with them. Andrew comes to Peter and says, I found the one we've been waiting for. It brings Peter to Jesus. We see the early apostles bringing people into the church. We see the early church members bringing people into the church. Even in the times of persecution, Christians were constantly bringing others into the church. So Jesus says today, do not be indifferent. Do not fall asleep. But instead be wide awake in the proclamation of the good news of the gospel. Second lesson we learn is that Jesus is telling us we are to take care of our responsibility. In verse 34, he says, It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his servants in charge, each with his work, and commands a doorkeeper to stay away. The word translated work here means doing your labor or the deed you have been given. Here to stay awake means to refrain from sleep or to pay attention. So we are not to slough off from our responsibility in the church. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, we've all been given some type of need or work in the church. As we heard St. Paul say in our second reading to the church in Corinth, you have, been, you have received all spiritual gifts. Everything that you need in order to make the church grow, and that's true today. In this congregation, every person has a spiritual gift or gifts to help the church grow. But if we don't take care of the responsibility, if we don't use those spiritual gifts to build up the church, then the church becomes stagnant and dormant. The church does not grow. And we can use all kinds of excuses. I can remember one of the last years of the old LCA before the merger happened. Happened to be in the, it was a break in the Indiana Kentucky Senate Assembly. And we had the presiding bishop of the LCA there, Bishop Crumlin. And he and I happened to meet in the restroom. And I began a conversation with him. I said something about why is the church not taking advantage of the 
TV and radio. Because this was that time period when every time you turn on the TV, it was the old time gospel hour with Jerry Falwell, it was James Robinson out of Texas, it was some guy out of California, uh, plus shooter, plus three or four of the preachers out of California. It was Jimmy Swagger out of Louisiana, it was, um, I can't think of the name right now, the tall Baptist preacher from Peachtree Baptist Church in Atlanta. And in between all those, you see Catholic Mass. And that was it. I said, why are we on TV? And I was shocked when he said, well, you know, our type of worship doesn't really adapt well for TV like those other churches. I thought, well, we're sure we adapt as well as Roman Catholic Mass does. And why much is, what's the difference? But see, always finding an excuse for not spreading the gospel. Instead, we should have boldly launched into an effort to get on TV, be, have our best preachers throughout the LCA on TV every Sunday, the way Jerry Falwell and Swagger and Seven Hundred Club and P.T. Pass the Loop Club, Jim Baker and all those others were on TV. We have to take care of our responsibility which is claiming good news for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now some people may say, yeah, but we've been doing it and nothing has happened and I'm tired and I'm bored. And you know, we do the same thing every week. Don't you do the same thing on your job? When I was in high school, there were five of us that ran around together that were really close, five of us guys. Four of us, after graduation from high school, went off to college. One of our friends went directly from high school to working at the Ford plant in Louisville, where they make the F-150 pickups and the SUVs and the Explorers and so forth. And his job was that he hung the same right door on every cab that came along for eight to ten hours a day and when it was rush time, when they were trying to meet the deadlines for the new miles, he worked seven days a week, 12 hours a day, same door. I asked him why, I said, isn't that boring? Doing the same thing. And this was summertime, and I'm home from college, and I got some job where I'm making $2 an hour, making $80 a week. He said, boring. He said, this is my livelihood. He said, what are you making on your summer job? And I said, $2 an hour. He goes, I'm making $12 an hour. He said, I've got all these benefits for being part of the UAW, insurance, all these things. He said, that right door on that right side of the cab is my livelihood. And he said, even though sometimes it may seem monotonous, he said, it's what puts food on the table, pays rent for my apartment, able for me to buy a new car, and that's the way it should be with our Christian faith. It shouldn't be there, oh, it's boring, it's monotonous, it's the same thing every Sunday, it's the same thing middle of the week, it's the same thing every day. It should be, this is our livelihood. This is salvation. This is the promise of everlasting life. And so there's no way it can be boring. You're reaching out to people with a life lives we turn into. You're reaching out to people The good news that they don't have to carry around that guilt anymore because of what the mistakes they have made. They don't have to carry that burden of past sin. That Jesus Christ and his death on the cross has liberated us from that guilt, from those burdens. That believing in him, though our sins be like scarlet, they become as white as snow by being washed in the blood of the Lamb. So we must take our responsibility, take care of our responsibility. That's what Jesus is reminding us this first Sunday in Advent. To stay awake to keep doing our responsibility. It's a responsibility of everyone. It's not just the preacher's job. It's not just the evangelist's job. It's not just the missionary's job. It's a job of every Christian. That's how the church grew. St. Paul went to places 
that when he arrived there, the church was already there. And then we talk about how St. Paul started a lot of churches and was probably the greatest church planner of all times. But he didn't plan every church throughout the Roman world. Neither did the other apostles plan them all. Some were planted by people who heard the good news and went back to their home and started the church. And then the apostles would come. So we must take our responsibility seriously. Because the stakes are high. The stakes are not just about this world. The stakes are about eternity. So the master has gone away and left us, his servants, deeds and labor to do, work to do for the glory of his kingdom. And then we learn from our lesson today that we are to continue to await the Lord's return. Verse 35, we read, Therefore, stay awake. For you do not know when the master of the house will come. In the evening, or at midnight, or when the rooster crows, or in the morning. Uh, let me stop right there and explain something. Mark, unlike Matthew, Matthew's gospel was written predominantly for the Jewish people. Matthew was, of course, Jewish. He was a tax collector. He was followed Jesus, so he was writing to Jewish people to convince them that Jesus was indeed the Messiah. This is why he uses so many Old Testament references and uses so many imagery of Moses and so forth. Mark is writing to the Roman world. Some scholars think specifically to, the, to Rome itself. It's believed that Mark got his information from Peter. But Mark, having been a Gentile, writes in a Roman fashion. So when Jesus talks about uh, in the evening or at midnight or when the rooster crows or in the morning, those were the four watches of the Roman night. That's the way the Romans divide up the night. When we read John and Matthew, we see the traditional Hebrew way of breaking up the night. So Mark fashions Jesus' words to be what the people would understand, the Gentile people would understand. They would understand. So at the end, to then explain, well, this is the Jewish way of keeping time in the night instead of the way you're used to. So, Jesus could come at any time, lest he come suddenly and find you asleep. And when I say to you, I say to all, stay awake. Now, what is interesting is his last command to stay awake is a military term. It means to be vigilant, to not be part napping while on duty. It means to pay attention to what is around you. Is that term that comes from the military for a person who is a sentry at night or a guard posted at night to watch to make sure the enemy does not sneak a ball. That you are making sure your position does not come under attack without being able to warn everyone so they can be prepared to repel that attack. It is that military term that means that you watch and stay awake through the night and if you are caught napping, you could forfeit that your life for having fallen asleep. So Jesus is saying, even though I have not come yet, even though you may think it's been a long time since my resurrection and ascension, you still have to stay awake. You still have to be like that sentry who's on duty. You still have to be like that guard by the gate to make sure that no one enters who should not be entered. <clears throat> you still must be ready because I will come in any time. And as he says to us, when he comes, no one knows when that will be. The angels don't know. He doesn't know. Only God the Father. See, contrary to what you read in some of these books that are put out in America and some movies that are made, there's no rolling back to Jesus' return. The book of Revelation is not a road map to telling you that Jesus is coming when you see all these things done. The dragon is not China, the bear is not Russia, the eagle's not us. Leopards are not the heirs. No one knows when Jesus is coming. And when Jesus tells us himself, he doesn't even know when he will come. Who is 
some modern day Christian to write a book saying, oh, this is what's going to happen to stop all these signs. So this is why he says stay away. This is why he says you must continue to watch. This is why he says you cannot be indifferent. You cannot shirk your responsibility. But then you must always be awake. You must always be working. And you must always be ready. Because that day will come. The trumpet will sound. The angels will descend. And then will come the king in all his glory. Satan rejoices every time a Christian falls asleep on the job. Satan rejoices every time a Christian decides it's not their job to spread the good news. It's not their job to invite others to come to church. It's not their job to take on some responsibility within the workings of the church. There's others to do that. When that happens, when someone develops that attitude, that's a Christian falling asleep. And Satan paint the blood. So we do not want to give Satan a reason to rejoice. We do not want to give Satan a reason to strike him in vain. We want Satan to be dreaded at the end of time because he knows that's when he will go into the pit prepared for him and his angels and demons since the beginning of time. So be alert, be awake, be on guard, and watch. Peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Please turn to page 104 in the front of your worship book for the words of the Nicene. Pray to the Lord. 
Nelson and Linda Smith are the ushers. We're happy to have you worshiping with us. This is November the 30th, 2014, the first Sunday of Advent. We've meditated on the coming of Christ, the second coming of Christ, and we also are awaiting and counting the Sundays for the first time when Jesus came, December the 25th, when we celebrated Christmas Day. Jesus, our Heavenly Father, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, became a human being, came to us, and today we celebrate Holy Communion. We can participate in the humanity of Jesus, united with the divinity of Jesus in his heart as we receive the blood of Christ. We have now coming, uh, coming up in our service, we have repented, we've heard our profession of faith, which is the Nicene Creed. We have other parts of the service, which will be, we've had the prayers of intercession, a powerful prayer, when we are all together in the body of Christ, we're all together praying, it's extremely powerful. We can feel God's power here. Jesus is here with us. Two or three are gathered together in his name. He is here with us. We're now having the offering, and we'll have the offering prayer, the great thanksgiving, the song to the holy, 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 and during the holy, 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 it's one of my favorite times. We have the angels and archangels singing and all the saints who've gone before us who are there with us as we participate in the heavenly food and drink which we will receive from our Father and Son, Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ, as God is able to give us the real presence. You can watch now the acolyte and the ushers. After that, we have the Eucharistic prayer, Lord's Prayer, Lamb of God, the distribution and blessing, the post-communion canticle, post-communion prayer, the benediction, and the recessional hymn is, My Lord, what a morning. So watch as we're continuing our service.
for Mary's openness to your will. Bless her for your son Jesus, the word made flesh. And the night which she was betrayed, O Lord Jesus, took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant, my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ will come again. again. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth and the death and resurrection. We look with hope for his coming. Come, come, Lord Jesus. Jesus. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us. Bless us, men. May your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people. Fill us with your light. Bring the gift of peace on earth. Come, Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. All praise and glory of yours, Holy One of Israel, Word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day of our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. St. John's. 
visitors are receiving Holy Communion. We're thankful that we've repented, we've had our sins forgiven, that we love God, we love one another, and we have the real presence of Jesus Christ. Many of us feel warmth, the real presence of Christ as He is alive within us day by day. And we have this renewal. We're so thankful to God. This is the first Sunday of Advent, November the 30th, 2014. We're happy to have you join us. We'd love to have you here in the pew if you are able to come. We love you, we miss you, we need you. We're providing meals for the homeless. We're helping those in the community. We're doing the things that Jesus Christ asks us to do. You can see the pastor now receiving Holy Communion, body and blood of Christ, the real presence. And it's something that is very precious to us in our faith and, and sustains us and helps us. We invite you to come worship with us. And if you have never invited Jesus to come into your heart, pray the prayer of acceptance and he will bless you. He will be with you forever and throughout eternity. Negro Spiritual it was uh, popularized by John Work and the Jubilee Singers after the Civil War. Had it not been for John Work, the Jubilee Singers, and the Fisk University in Nashville, we would never have had these spirituals. They were uh, popular at Fisk University, and then the singers went throughout the country, sang them to various congregations and various venues became popular. This is our Lord, what a morning.
you for watching St. John's broadcast on YouTube. Turn in any, tune in anytime. We're happy to have you here. We love you. We miss you. We'd like to have you worshiping with us in person. Our church offers a Christian school program, three and four ages, nursery and pre-K. If you need more information, it's 325-4311. Tune in again anytime. Just Google us up on YouTube. Thank you for joining our worship service this Lord's Day. I hope and I pray that God continues to bless you this day and all your days. We'll pray for you. Continue to pray for us in our ministry.